The main lever of Ukraine's success in battles with the Russian Black Sea Fleet in the Black Sea are the Magura unmanned surface vehicles, the prototype of which was created in a Kiev garage. These sea drones have damaged or destroyed more than 20 Russian warships. The Sea Baby drones from the Security Service of Ukraine have also proven effective. It was these drones that dealt Russia two key blows in the battle for the Black Sea, according to the Time correspondent Simon Schuster. The journalist showed how he tried to control the Magura naval drone at a secret military base in Ukraine. The Magura prototype, Schuster notes, was created in the spring of 2022 by a group of former government officials, engineers, corporate executives and tech investors. While Ukraine has no major warships in its navy, it has used these drones to outmaneuver one of the world's greatest naval powers. Produced at a cost of about $200,000 apiece, the weapons have damaged or destroyed about two dozen Russian warships, about a third of the Black Sea Fleet, including large amphibious assault ships and missile carriers worth billions of dollars, he writes. The strikes forced the rest of the Russian fleet to retreat from the Ukrainian coast, effectively admitting defeat in the greatest naval battle Europe had seen since World War II, Schuster said. Thanks to the Magura drone conceived in a Kiev garage, the Russian Navy has begun to look useless on a critical front in the war. As the author writes, Russian dictator Vladimir Putin understands this, having fired the commander of the Black Sea Fleet when Ukrainian drone strikes intensified. One of the most painful incidents for Russians was the attack by naval drones on the Crimean Bridge on July the 17th, 2023. The explosions then caused serious damage not only to Russia's supply lines but also to its image as a military power. While the Kremlin did not reach for its nuclear arsenal, it responded with a series of missile strikes on the ports of Odessa and other Ukrainian cities. Worse, in the following days, Russia resumed its blockade of the Black Sea, the article notes. The impact on Ukraine's economy was devastating. For a time, the country tried to circumvent the blockade by moving cargo to a smaller port on the Danube River, but Russia responded with relentless bombing of that port, trying to cut off all access for Ukrainian goods to world markets. Then the SBU launched a series of drones called Sea Baby, which could carry much more explosives, said the head of the agency, Vasil Maliuk. President Volodymyr Zelensky set the task to put an end to the dominance of the Russian Federation in the waters of the Black Sea. To do this, Ukraine has decided to target the strategic Russian port of Novorossiysk, which, in addition to housing some of Russia's largest warships, serves as a hub for oil exports, the lifeblood of Russia's military economy. The result was that a naval drone in the port of Novorossiysk struck a huge Russian landing ship called the Olenegorsk Miner, punching a hole in its side. The ship was so badly damaged that it had to be towed back to port. For the rest of the Kremlin's fleet, the attack proved that Ukraine can sink ships far from the combat zone, writes Shuster. The Russians no longer rule the Black Sea. They are forced to hide their ships. The author quotes the words of the head of the SBU, Maliuk. The show of force had little effect. Ukraine's attack on the Olenegorsk miner showed the Russian Navy that if it fired on civilian ships in these waters, the Ukrainians could do the same in the Novorossiysk area. For Zelensky and his team, it was a breakthrough. They outsmarted the invaders with little more than a drone crew, a small fleet of boats, and a willingness to call Putin's bluff. The world's major maritime powers took note, the article says. The successful attack of the SBU on the large amphibious ship Olenegorsky Goniak in August of the same year demonstrated that Ukraine is capable of destroying ships even far from the combat zone. The material says that it was the SBU that started the history of Ukrainian maritime drones by coming up with the idea of attaching Starlink to its boats and using them as drones. In total, as a result of special operations, the SVU destroyed 11 Russian ships. Ukraine is preparing to use Western-supplied F-16 fighters against Russia. This was stated by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in his evening video address on August 26. Today I started the day with a separate long conversation with the Commander-in-Chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Oleksandr Swyrsky, 
both on repelling this missile attack in detail, and on our response to Russia, we are preparing, and on the use of F-16s, and on the operation in the Kursk region, we are continuing our actions in certain areas exactly as Ukraine needs. Over the past 24 hours, we have expanded our zone of control, there is another replenishment of the exchange fund. According to Zelensky, the situation on other fronts was also discussed, including the Pokrovsk direction, where the Russian army is slowly advancing and heavy fighting is underway. In addition, the Ukrainian leader reported on several important decisions to protect Ukraine's energy facilities from Russian strikes, but did not provide details. The F-16s will likely have two main roles, experts said, one defensive and one offensive. Air defense is really, really important, Peter Layton, former Royal Australian Air Force officer and associate fellow at RUSI, told. Looking at the big picture, the Ukrainian National Air Defense commanders might try to use the short-range guns, like the Jeopard, to kill the Shahids, use the F-16s to kill the cruise missiles, the older SAMs to kill the ballistic missiles, and the Patriots to kill the Kinsholes. In an offensive role, Leighton said F-16s could be used to replicate one of Russia's more successful military innovations used during the full-scale invasion, glide bombs. Glide bombs are standard airdropped bombs modified with fins and GPS guidance systems in order to be launched at a target from a distance rather directly overhead. They're far from a new technology, dating back to World War II, minus the GPS, and being used in conflicts including Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. As a result, Leighton says to expect Ukrainian forces to start deploying their own versions of the large glide bombs.